Now, do you have enough? Enough money, enough material things, enough, do you have enough or can you do it a little more? So you say, okay, I have enough. That's wonderful and I praise God for enough. Because only two people in the Bible said they had enough and that was Esau and Jacob. But everybody had more and want, wanted more. Why? Because if you have enough, that's a blessing. But if you have more, you can do more. If you have more, you can give more to the kingdom. If you have more, is not to look at it. But to lose it in God's kingdom. It's not a loss. This verse shows us five levels of prosperity. And you've got to be on one of these levels. And if you feel led of God to ask to go to the next level, then you will be doing a biblical thing. So let me show you according to your needs. Ladies, you, you shop for flour. You go to buy flour. You can buy a one pound flour. Or a five pound pack flour. Or a ten pound pack. They even have 25 pound bags of flour. And if you have a wedding or something big, you buy a 50 pound pack of flour. So what, what I'm talking about, levels of capacity. You could be living on a one pound flour budget, or you could be living on a 50 pound. It's up to you, because God is going to do it. You don't have to suffer. It is not God's will for his people, however, mis however many mistakes they have made and not been trained in budgeting and saving and things like that, have erred definitely. But still, God wants his people never to be late on their payments. Not to miss your mortgage or your rent. Not to have enough money to put gas. God doesn't want that. He's a big God. He's an awesome father and a beautiful provider. So I am going to be emphasizing the willingness of God to take you to the next level of blessing. It's in the word here. I am not coming out of this text. I will stay in it and show you the five levels. Of abundance. Um, my theme is the different levels of abundance. And I would like to know which level you are on. And if you want to go to the next level. We will pray for that at the end of the service. But my topic is. is as I told you in the New Testament there is a parallel. And here in verse 7. I will read it. And the children of Israel were one. Fruitful. Say fruitful. fruitful. Are you fruitful? Are you truthful? And two, increased. How? There's a big adjective here that's in the New Testament. And multiplied. And wax exceeding. Mighty. And the land was filled with them. God did it for them. My topic is what God has done for them, He is willing to do it for us. And because we are the children of promise, the spiritual sons of Abraham, with a better covenant, with a better provider. With a God who done it on Calvary and who said he who was rich became poor so that we who are poor might become rich. I believe that you can have more than you need to help others in their time of distress. We don't have plenty to show off and we don't have much to uh, boast and brag. But we, if we, God bless us, there is a reason for it. And I want you to know this. 
How many of you believe Jesus is coming soon? How many of you believe he will come this week? Okay, this is the point I would like to make. I'm not emptying your, 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 your hope. But if Jesus would have come this week, every penny you have in the bank will go to the Antichrist. I'm not telling you to empty your bank account and give because Jesus is coming tomorrow. I'm not saying that. I just want you to think. That when God gives you excess, it's not to hoard, but to share. And if we share as the early church did, every man sharing with their brothers in need, in need, in, in, in real need. We, we don't want to spoil people by becoming God to them. And, and running after them and meeting all the needs. That's not our job. It is God's job to meet the needs of his people. But if you say you have the love of God. And you see your brother suffering. And you say God bless you. Uh, you're hungry. Go in faith and be filled. He said you know not the love of God. We want to be practical in our word today. So God's blessing expands us. To receive more. So that when we receive more, we have more to give. Amen. I am only interested in more because I want to give more. Amen. Amen. The first level. And the children of Israel. You'll find the phrase, the children of Israel, over 300 times in the Pentateuch. And one Sunday school kid. Asked the teacher, everything I hear is the children of Israel. The children of Israel was in Egypt. The children of Israel crossed the Red Sea. The children of Israel was in the promised land. And the children of Israel fought the giants. What, what happened to the adults? <laughs> everything is just the children. But we mean here the offspring of God's people. Hallelujah. So the children of Israel were fruitful. Now, you can follow me in the outline. Not one was fruitful, but all. It's not that we have one brother here, one sister there who is fruitful. God, God, God wants more than that. He doesn't just want you and you and you. He didn't select you and you just to be fruitful. He wants all of his church, all of his people. Like this nation to be fruitful. Because fruitfulness brings glory to God. Herein is my father glorified. That you bear much fruit. When you bear and you become fruitful, God is glorified. Amen. Fruitfulness is a sign of God's presence in your life. When in the Ark of the Covenant they took Aaron's rod and put it in the very presence of the Shekinah, the next morning that little piece of wood bore almonds. It became fruitful because it was in the presence of God. You want the secret of fruitfulness? Abide in His presence. Stay with God and you will bud and you will bear. Thirdly, bearing fruit is a sign of an obedient life in John 15 1 you can't get a better passage of scripture on fruitfulness every branch in me that beareth not fruit my father cuts it off and you wonder why some people get cut off from everything spiritual and ecclesiastical it's because they were not bearing fruit and the father decided to do something about it he will prune his church and if you're not bearing fruit, you need to read that passage again and again until it dawns on you that fruitfulness is God's will for our lives. And it's a sign of obedience. So the first level is fruitfulness. And I have to ask you the question. Are you a fruitful vine? Are you bearing fruit of the Spirit? When you look at your life, can you see... Uh, um, Love that is not partial. That you can see love, you're not doing it as a favor. You're doing it because you have the love of God. And the love of God drives you, constrains you to do what you're doing. 
And you have to examine yourself and see the fruit. By this we shall know the real from the fake. There are too many fake people today. Are pretending and imitating. But when the real tests come, if you have the fruit of the Spirit, it will manifest. So let's look for fruits, not nuts. Secondly, the second level is that the children of Israel increased abundantly. A strong adjective describing their increase. Uh, Joseph is a classic example of how you can be trapped and how you can be in prison and how you can be under uh, in captivity and still prosper. There is no prison that the enemy can build that will keep him from blessing you. I don't care what surrounds you, it's what's above you. I don't care what's beneath you, it's what's in you. And if you have the love of God, the main qualifier, if you have the fruit of the Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling, according to the mighty working of the Holy Spirit, you will be a blessed person and you will increase abundantly. God will increase the provisions of his people even in captivity. So you think you might be bound right now in circumstances? God could change that. Israel found safety in numerical strength. But we find strength in one. Let me illustrate that. It's a whole other sermon. This one thing I'm going to tell you, I've spread it out in a whole sermon, naming the 12 tribes of uh, Israel and identifying their names and giving you the meaning. But this is one truth I want us to say we have 12 tribes and they're named in the first uh, few verses. Now the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man his household came. And they're all named there. Verse 2, verse 3, verse 4. 70 souls came from the loins of one man. Get this point. 12 men with one lady, one sister. 12 men with one father and four different mothers. It doesn't matter which church you got birthed in. It doesn't matter what denomination you got saved in. It doesn't matter your mother was Rebecca or Leah, one of those, spiritually speaking. What matters, we have one father. We have one father. Paul says that we have one father, one Lord, one God, one baptism, one body, one spirit. Hallelujah, somebody. So I don't care what country you come from or what uh, ethnicity you come from or who was your grandparents. It uh, doesn't matter. We came from different sources, but we have one father. Jesus said, I'm going to make that happen. I'm going to my God and to your God. I'm going to my Father and to your Father. Our Heavenly Father, we have a Father. We are not orphans. We are not fatherless. They had numerical strength. They had safety in numerical strength. We find our strength in one. The third point here, and the children increase abundantly, is that God's blessing have no boundaries. You cannot box in God's blessing. If you do that, it will overflow. When you're in the favor of God, nothing remains stagnant. You are ever increasing. You increase in strength, you increase in joy, you increase in, in the ability to love the unloved and, and to do things that only Christ in you can make happen. Oh, to be increasing. Hallelujah. Thirdly, 
Take another level of fruitful. You need to get there. So we start. Then we move to the second level of increase in abundance. So I'll give you life. And I'll give it to you more abundantly. So it's a fascinating word in the New Testament, you know, abundance. Thirdly, and the children of Israel will multiply. God now changes his language of blessing. Some people have additions. God add a little something here. And God add a little something there. And God took a little bit here. And the devil took a little bit there. God changed the language. He is now into multiplication. Two plus five is seven. But two times five is ten. God wants to multiply what you have. But if you keep it in your pocket, it's just going to remain there. Like the little lad with five loaves and two fishes in a famished situation. Handed it to Jesus and look what he did. He took it. He broke it. He blessed it. And he multiplied it. Give the little you have to God and let him multiply it. He is a multiplier. I've asked God, don't, don't add, just, just multiply, Lord. Just multiply. He changes his language. See, God's mathematics works different from ours. And I love it when God is in charge. And I have a calculator that sometimes it doesn't go to infinity. But God's calculator, hear me. You see the things that you have done and nobody knows? God's keeping the books. The sacrifices you make and nobody sees. God's watching. And your blessing is definite. He owes no man. He will reward you in this life. And in the one to come. I am not so concerned about the next life. I want a little reward here. I want a house to live in here. I want a car to drive here. I know I have a fiery chariot in heaven, so I'm not worried about a mansion over the hilltop. I want a little blessing here. I hope you want a blessing now. The first verse, word of this chapter is now. Watch it. Now. Fourthly, sorry, one more point here. Verse 12. Watch. They were multiplied. Verse 12. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Affliction have a purpose. And if you feel that all life has been handing you is affliction, the purpose of that is to grow you and to multiply you. The Christian thrives best in trials and tribulations. So you say, Lord, increase my faith. Bad prayer. I'll tell you why. Faith is not just a habit stored up in here. Faith is something you act on. And you want more faith? He'll give you a bigger problem. So you can exercise your faith. So be careful how you ask. And what you ask for. Because when you ask God to test you and prove you. And give you a faith. You just ask for trouble. So the more they afflicted them. Is the more they grew and multiplied. Fourthly, and the children of Israel wax. Watch how the language changes and how the level goes. The children of Israel waxed exceedingly mighty. The word wax means to grow with ease so that you can slip through the cracks. 
And any time, look, you know that if you have something that's rough and tight, you put a little oil or WD-40, that thing will go through like nothing. So the, the, the word wax means to, to so polish you, so oil you, that whenever the enemy, like a fish, want to grab you, you slip out of his grip. You're waxed. And you're waxed for greatness. So you can slip through any crack that comes your way. You see, language knows no one word to describe God's blessing. It's now moved up to the level of exceeding. And that's why I said we have a parallel in the New Testament. Ephesians 3.20 Now, again is that word. Now, unto him. <laughs> oh Lord, thank you, it's him. Thank you, God, you are the blesser. Jehovah Jireh is still your name. Oh, Jehovah Rufika, you're still your name. Unto him that is kind of able. Now unto him that is halfway able. Paul said, I am fully persuaded, fully persuaded that he is able. <laughs> Are you fully persuaded that whatever you ask God for today and believing for your, in your life for a miracle, that God is able to do it? Yes. Unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all which we ask or think to him be glory and power and might and dominion because he's the only wise God. Here is the parallel of uh, Exodus 1 7. Able to do exceedingly abundantly. Watch it. Able to do to exceedingly. Three abundantly for above five all six which you can ask seven or think that's the new testament parallel to exodus 1 7 and so god wants you to be waxed with his blessing. He moved up the language to exceedingly. And so they became strong. Like an army. Mighty as their own faith in their own God. Successful people make a successful church. If all we have is poor people. Who can't give something when the Sunday comes, but needs something? What kind of church are we going to have? A closed church. Because it takes money to run a church. We don't spend money badly here. We have been sacrificing and cutting corners and cutting corners that now instead of a square, we have a circle. Because we've cut out all the corners. But I am believing that God is able to take DLA to the next level of abundance. So that we become a strong church. A church that can go into the community and help the community. A church that can move from home to home and deliver something with a powerful testimony of God's grace. You don't know how many poor people they have out there. They might be living in a house and driving a car but they can't pay their bills. Yesterday I watched nearly 200 cars come through this lot to get a box of food. We're delighted that the food ministry is doing something. Give God praise. I have the statistics, Mr. Jean, you have the statistics. We have given over one million meals. I know, I know you have it. Can you say amen if that's correct? So God wants you to be successful. 
God wants you to have a, a good home. A nice car that doesn't break down. Where's my little girl? Poor thing. Every car she has breaks down. I rebuke that breakdown spirit of cars in your life today. That God will bless you with a car that you'll never break down. Hallelujah. God wants you to be successful. And fifthly, and the land was filled with them. God wants the land to be filled with his people. So that they can lend their testimony, their light and their influence in our community. We got to move away from the little flock mentality. And believe God wants us scattered. Together in worship but scattered in ministry. Everybody in their own zone serving the Lord and working for the Lord on your street and in your community. God's blessing not only provides but populates. That's what heaven is all about. Population. We have to depopulate hell and repopulate heaven. That's the mission of the church. Why? I have scripture for that? Yes. That you may snatch them like a burning rod out of the fire and translate them from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Can I hear somebody say, translate them. Move them out of their darkness and bring them into the light. Take them out of their bondage and bring them into the liberty of Christ's church. We have a task. We have been commissioned to do the work of evangelism and soul winning. Amen. And may God prosper you and bless you and give you more and enlarge your tent that you can do more for God. What God has done for them, do you believe he can do for us? Do you believe? Yes. All right, so I'm closing now. <laughs> are you fruitful this is the first level have you gone to the second level where you are increasing in every area not just money every area of your life increasing thirdly are you multiplying or are you just yourself have you multiplied yourself in others Are you a duplicator? They were multiplied. Are you waxed? It's the grace of God all over you. So that nothing that tries to squeeze you can crush you. You will slip out. Wax exceedingly mighty. May God fill the land with believers like these who have trusted their God and who have gone beyond poverty to success because this is what God wants for us. Again, I say unto you, you don't have to live in scarcity and famine all the days of your life. God can change that. God can bring happiness into your marriage. God can bless your children with better jobs than you ever dream of. I may not have many blessings, but I see my blessings in my son-in-law and in my daughter and in my two grandchildren. I see the blessings of God in my wife. I see the blessings of God in our home because God is no man's debtor. Hallelujah. So there are five levels and I don't know which one you are on, but if you want to, if you think you've reached, fine. But I want more. Not for myself, because I'm a giver. You see, you don't know me. You don't know my story. You don't know how much I give. I give and give and give until I could have to go by the rich man at the middle of the night and say, lend me three loaves. Because a friend of mine has come and I have nothing to set before him. I want to pray with you. Then Pastor Jerry is going to come. And this is what we do. We're closing service differently. Now it's only 11.29. We have time for prayer. I want my prayer warriors to come here and hold hands together in a circle and start to pray and rebuke devils and pray for healing. 
while those who need prayer come on this side and the ministers and their families and the prayer warriors here will lay hands upon you and pray. everybody who needs prayer should get prayer so I'll say a general prayer based on the word and then they will come and finish up so how many of you really in whatever level you are in you want to go to another level can you kind of stand and I'll pray with you I'm standing already I'm standing already because God I need you I will never be at the place where I don't need God I will never have enough that I don't need more to give and as you stand don't stand because I asked you, but stand because this word meant something to you this morning and yet you will decide to believe God I want you to go back home and read that outline. It was written in 1990. God said, speak it now. Could you imagine? <laughs> Father, our great God, you have given us the privilege to call you Abba because we are sons and daughters of the King. We humbly stand before you and having heard your word, decide to believe you that you want us to prosper for you delight in the prosperity of your servants you delight it's a joy for you to bless your people and i pray that blessing upon them now whatever level they're on move them up to the next level make us fruitful fruitful and multiply and increase and wax and spread us out in the land in Jesus name I pronounce a high priestly Exodus 1 7 and Ephesians 3 20 blessing upon your people this morning take the glory Lord send the fire send the power send the blessing now now Lord you're a now God now we wait on you we live in expectation this could be the week of the miracle this could be the week of healing this could be the day of change of turning things around of, of turning the page and starting all over again today is that day in Jesus name in Jesus name